Okay, so welcome to this 29th lecture. In the previous lecture, we saw application or theory related to non-homogeneous Neumann condition. Now we'll see its application, right? So now in this, uh, what we have is a magnetic material, right? And with some conductivity also. So it is a magnetic material with some conductivity, and on this both sides, we are imposing the same H value, right? Earlier, what we saw it was H T and H B, that was in general, but here it is H H and H same. Now, where this condition occurs, for example, we had seen earlier, if you consider a thin lamination or thin conducting plate, like core of a rotating machine or transformer, you will generally have tangential field excitation on both the surfaces, right? And that is similar to this. And this tangential excitation, although they, it may be little bit different, but since this thickness of this lamination is very small, you can approximate it as being equal tangential ex excitation. So now this condition is similar to this. Now of course, this is vertical, I am showing here horizontal, but the condition is same. So this actually is very uh, sort of common that is a conducting element excited on both its surfaces with the same magnetic field intensity. And then there is a diffusion uh, you know phenomena on both sides, right. More about it uh, this for when we go further, right. So now here, so this is the geometry and we, we are imposing this. So now, when we uh, do the coding as uh, you know by using all this formulation, now here is there a J here? No, there is no J here, is it not? So here like what we are doing is we are just getting this field distribution by virtue of only, only boundary condition, there is no J. So the right hand side matrix, B matrix will be contributed only by this capital B small b and there is no capital B. Uh, capital J entries because there is no current density here, right. So there is no source current density here. There are, there will be induced current, but there is no source current density, right, because J we generally reserve it for source current density, right. So now here you can see, here now this H, how do we understand this? So here you have uh, you know some plus, here you have minus and at the center you have 0 and this is a time varying case, right. Now to get this H, H and H here, effectively what you need to have is, now I am just uh, right, uh, drawing the same thing and if you have to have the corresponding H here tangential, effectively you will have to have some kind of you know distributed current source effectively which will give give you this right now that distributed current source which could be here or it could be anywhere in the in the uh, geometry not necessarily here inside it could be outside also which could actually give you this but the only thing it should be symmetrical that means if suppose you are showing it here then again it should be here because it is then only you will get symmetrical things. So now at the center point on the center line you will then find that the contributions of these two will be exactly they will get because this current this is a distributed current source on the on the center line it will uh, the contributions will get 0 because these two currents will get cancelled with each other because these are distributed current source, right. Going further now, here if you now actually, uh, so this is the 2B by delta, that means this is the total uh, gap, this is thickness 2B. So effectively why 2B, because with respect to center line, so one this is B, individual this is B, because you know we are considering like two diffusion processes, one from this surface, one from this. So that becomes easier if you 
you know analyze the total thickness if you write it as 2 times b right with this center line as reference right. So, now here if you see the so this is 2 b by delta. So, what is 2 b? 2 b is the thickness. So, thickness by skin depth. So, it is like a normalized thickness with respect to skin depth. If the normalized thickness is much more than skin depth, that means this you know distance, this thickness is very high, then from both sides there will be complete diffusion, is it not? Suppose we assume that this thick individual B is a 6 times or 10 times the skin depth, the entire field will diffuse, is it not? Because in one skin depth you have 30 per 36 percent of the, it reduces to 36 percent of that at the surface and in 5 skin depths it almost will become 0, is it not? So, that means there will be complete diffusion. So, if it is complete diffusion, the complete, the, the loss will be, the loss that would be occurring in the plate will be uh, twice of that of, so here the individual loss is h square upon twice sigma delta is the loss corresponding to semi infinite case, which actually we had seen in lecture 10, you can refer lecture 10, there I had given two cases, one was you know thickness much smaller than skin depth, other was thickness much greater than skin depth. So, this is this is the case of thickness much greater than skin depth in this zone and there if it was a semi infinite case, it was h square upon twice sigma delta was the total loss, loss per unit volume I think, right. So, now it, since if the th thickness is much larger than skin depth, there will be two times this loss because one from this side and one from this side. So, this, these are like two semi infinite cases. So, the total loss that is why it will be twice of this, two into this and that is why it goes to twice, it settles to twice because it is s square upon 2 sigma delta. So, it is normalized to. So, and then at, at very low thickness uh, as I explained earlier, if it is very low thickness, then these effects of these two currents will get cancelled at this point so, and then there will not be any loss. Now, let us go further and analyze more complicated case. So, this is a case for transformer core joint. So, now this we know that this is a say vertical limb of a transformer and this is a horizontal yoke of the transformer and there is a joint, right. And this is called as mitered joint. There could be a, also a step lap joint, but since it is one step step lap, so this is like a one step. So, it is a mitered joint. So, here if you take a cross section like this and see into this cross section, you will get the geometry like this and this gap now it is alternating. The gap that appears here does not ap appear at the same place because if it appears at the same place, this whole structure will be mechanically weak, is it not? It will be simply you know it will just uh, you know slide. So, there has to be like this uh, interlude joint so called, so that these joints air gaps, air gaps appear at different positions and that is why this whole joint here mechanically is stable. So, now here if you actually uh, know this the, the geometry details are taken from this reference here. So, now if you use the same formulation, this formulation right. So, again here we are imposing the conditions homo non homogeneous boundary condition right and now you can see here because of these gaps, air gaps, now the flux is not entirely uh, horizontal. It is you know a because of this because there is a fringing of the flux between the gaps, so there is going to be both components right. So, that is the reason that we will not here impose this condition, this also this will not be equal to 0 right. 
So, this will in general will not be equal to 0, but it will not contribute because this daba a z by daba x is basically a x hat and when you take a, a n hat will be still a y hat is it not. So, this dot product will still be 0. So, again only this term will remain, but daba a z by uh, daba x will be non-zero right and that is what we are seeing here. So, that is why it is important to understand the physics and you should know otherwise if you uh, uh, apply the same thing here you will get here flux parallel condition and then the results will be wrong. You are in fact forcing the flux to go parallel which is which will not be correct because of this fringing between the this because of this air gap there is a going to be a you know uh, x and y component both components are going to be here okay. So, then this was little bit advanced application of that non-homogeneous boundary condition using this in fact uh, you know you can find the effective complex permeability and all that also, uh, but you know you can uh, read this paper for that how to you know find some effective complex permeability for you know frequency response analysis okay now we will see another application uh, ad loss calculation in windings so this is in transformer windings of course. So, here uh, this some kind of 3D uh, geometry is shown to make you understand what we are doing. So, now this is the LV winding, this is the HV winding, this is the gap and the windings are circular around this core. You know, uh, earlier you know some of the students had doubt why are we multiplying that energy in energy calculation, why are we multiplying by my pi into mean diameter right. Now, he, he here you can see the flux is actually flux is flowing like this. So, flux is crossing which surface? The flux is crossing this surface is it not? This surface and this is the surface. Are you getting what I am saying? The flux is going to cross because there is a flux going to be always like this. So, flux is crossing this surface is this surface and this surface. When you actually develop these surfaces what you will get the pi into mean diameter will give you the mean circumference into this radial depth is the corresponding cross section through which the flux will cross is it not. So, that is the reason that pi into mean diameter into the radial depth of the winding is the area through which flux crosses. That is the reason when in those energy calculation we multiply by pi into mean diameter. Okay, so, now our objective here is to find out eddy current losses in this conductors, winding conductors. Now, actually here this winding has got uh, you know uh, you can actually see this reference and uh, in appendix A of this reference the complete design of that transformer is given right and we use the same design to calculate the leakage inductance by using FEM analysis earlier right. So, actually you can, uh, so we are taking the same details here. So, we, our objective is to calculate now eddy, eddy current loss in windings. Now, remember this eddy current loss in the winding is contributing to what in the equivalent circuit of transformer RAC, the total resistance that you see in the equivalent circuit, not central, the series resistance. R1 and say if it is referred to say primary one winding, say then you will have R1 and R2 dash, is it not? So, that R1 is not is DC resistance plus the AC, the it is effectively it is AC resistance. So, it has got basically DC resistance loss included plus skin and proximity losses, that means effectively eddy current losses, right. So, basically it is the RAC in the equivalent circuit of transformer. RDC just rho L by A that is simply the DC resistance, but that will not include this eddy current losses in the winding if you just consider RDC in the equivalent circuit right. If you calculate the total losses associated with a winding DC as square loss 
plus eddy current loss plus if uh, there are proximity losses and what not circulating current loss right all those losses you add together and then divide by i square i rms square then whatever resistance you get that will be the r ac effective r ac resistance that should be actually put in the transformer equivalent circuit as a series element in each of the winding is it clear so now our objective here is to find out the eddy current losses here based on the theory that we have covered till now now again here we are in fact you going to use magnetostatic field calculation you may be wondering that we have studied now time harmonic case and then why we are going back to magnetostatic right so here the conductor dimensions are such that the thickness is you know is not very high because you know the, the the dimensions are not very high as compared to the skin depth skin de skin depth of the copper is something like 10 mm so the, these are you know comparable this in fact thickness is lower width is almost equal to the skin depth so we can approximate it this as thin conductor approximation electrically thin that means the eddy the effect of eddy currents is not significant eddy currents are there but the reaction is not significant so what it amounts is the leakage field that we have been seeing leakage field in the transformer that will not get affected much affected by this induced eddy currents in the <laughs> conductors if they were affecting then what we have to do we have to model it as a time harmonic problem with all these conductors modeled individually with corresponding conductivity defined and then the finite element pro program whether it is commercial or your own will calculate the individual eddy current loss in each of these conductors by itself and will give you the answer but here we are trying to reduce our computational burden so what we are doing we are assuming that the conductor dimensions are you know not high as compared to skin skin depth so the eddy currents are not significant and hence they will not affect the leakage field so we can actually calculate the leakage field by magnetostatic calculation as we have done earlier wherein we just define n1 i1 and n2 i2 is it not ampere turn with a minus sign we balance the ampere turns this is suppose this winding one this winding two we define here n1 i1 and here minus n2 i2 we get the leakage field right once we have got the leakage field what we'll do we will actually calculate the field bx and by value at the center of each of these conductors now here in this design that we are considering there are now can you see here 20 there are 20 conductors so there are 10 10 turns radially that means there are 10 turns and each turn is having two parallel conductors so the effectively there are 20 conductors in radial direction 10 turns and each turn having two parallel conductors so that will give you 20 conductors in radial direction so that means here in see the uh, this uh, we are calculating eddy loss for the hu winding so in hu winding radial depth so there are 20 conductors and 10 turns each turn having two so that means these two conductors are forming one first turn these two conductors form second turn and last two conductors form 10th turn right but we are calculating because we have got the suppose we have got a solution apm solution then we'll get the value of bx and by at every point we can get so we will calculate bx and by at every each of those points so is it clear what we are doing so although we are calculating eddy currents which is basically which requires inherently time harmonic formulation is it not but we are calculating we are using the magnetostatic field calculating that bx and by and what is the underlying assumption here that the eddy currents are not significant because the di conductor dimensions are not uh, very much larger than 
the skin depth. So, you can actually neglect the eddy current reaction effect on the leakage field, right. So, first we are calculating the leakage field by using only magnetostatic formulation and then we will use the classical eddy current theory to calculate the eddy current loss. Is it clear? Okay. So, I will again explain this little bit more as we go along. So, now again uh, the same geometry has been drawn here. So, 20 conductors in uh, radial direction in the depth and there are 98 discs. So, there are in HV winding 1 to 98 discs, okay. So, that is why 1 to 98 discs, each disc is having 10, 10 turns. So, total number of turns in this winding are 980, but the total number of conductors for eddy current like calculation will be 980 into 2. So, now uh, earlier also we had seen that the leakage field pattern or the amp, this is called as ampere turn diagram is going to be like this. This is the LV winding, this is the HV winding and this is the gap. We had also seen earlier that why it remains constant because the number of turns enclosed by any flux line here in the middle is same. Either it is full HV ampere LV ampere turns or HV ampere turns. Whereas, as you go progressively inside LV winding or in the outward direction in the HV winding, the number of turns progressively enclosed will be lower. So, that is why the ampere this H value will be also lower and B value also will be lower. Is it clear? So, as you go here then there are number of turns. So, for example, here these are the HV 980 turns are here. As you go this flux line here will enclose all 980 turns. As you go inside this flux line here will link less than 980 turns. This line will further link lower and lower number of turns and finally, this line here point at the ID will link 0, 0 turns HV turns and that is why this H will be 0 and the corresponding B will be 0. Now, this B is the leakage field B or H, this is not the main flux in the core. So, like in the main core, the main flux in the core causes eddy current losses in the core, leakage field in the windings which is alternating causes the eddy currents in the winding conductors, right. Okay. So, now there is another point here. In the classical eddy current loss formula which is so this we had seen P is equal to omega square B square T square upon 34 times rho. This is a loss per unit volume, right. And this formula is for you know electrically thin conductor. That means, where the, the dimensions are comparable or lower than the skin depth, which is applicable here. Because copper skin depth is about 10 mm. So, these dimensions are comparable or lower than the skin depth. So, that is why we are using the eddy loss formula for electrically thin conductor, right. Okay. Then this formula, if B is constant then this formula has to be used, but now here B you can see it is varying. B is not constant, here it is constant, but there are there is no conductor here. So, basically conductors are only there in this LV and HV winding in this zone, is it not? And there the B is varying. So, if we have to actually calculate, so we will have to calculate you know the average value of B square in this and this. So, that actually if you again refer this chapter 4 in this book, you will find that by some you know small integration procedure of averaging and then you average it. B mean or B average square will be B gap square by 3. That means, this is the B gap. B gap square by 3 is the B average square. Okay. So, that is B gap square by 3. So, otherwise it is same the uh, omega square T square this B square upon 24 rho resistivity 24 times rho into now this is AD loss per unit volume. You have to multiply by volume now. So, what is the volume? It is uh, area 
cross section area of each turn s into pi into mean diameter uh, mean diameter of the entire winding actually you could do for every conductor or every turn you can take the corresponding mean diameter and do the calculations but you will find that if you take the entire mean diameter and multiply as a common the answers will not vary much that's why we are taking mean diameter of the entire winding entire winding here hv okay so pi into mean diameter is the circumference is it not into the area will give you the volume and this is for the one turn is it not and for n turns it will be you have to multiply by n because this loss will be in one turn multiplied by n so it will give for the all the n turns in the hv winding okay and then y3 here for three phases and of course b gap is given by mu0 ni by so because see mu0 ni by h ni by l is the h into mu0 is uh, is the b and if this is rms assuming that i is rms current so we have to multiply by root 2 to get the peak because in this formula b is actually the peak value b is a peak value because if you actually again refer to lecture 10 that we saw right there you know it was we had shown it like this both sides it is excited by b0 right and then b0 is the peak value it is there because we consider just a value that means it has to be peak value it is one value but whereas this if if i is in rms then you have to multiply by root 2 if i is in peak you do not have to take root 2 okay so now if you understood this then you know uh, you can uh, so what what was the procedure that we saw entirely we have to model these two windings you know suppose these are the so what will be our geometry geometry will be simply we will take transformer core window model these two LVHV windings put n1 i1 here then minus n2 i2 here we will get the leakage field plot is it not like this then we find at each of those conductor centers of the winding we find out bx and by right and then substitute in that formula now here one more thing is there when it is now each each point here has two components bx and by is it not at each point flux will have generally two components because it is a xy plane so two components so now here so suppose i take uh, some one conductor here like this and now the flux is at that point suppose the flux is like this flux is crossing like this so now i can resolve this flux into two components bx and by now for always remember this form in this formula this b and this t t is the perpendicular dimension of the conductor which is you know uh, normal to the flux that means dimension of the conductor which is perpendicular to the flux direction so that is the reason when it is axial component you have to take thickness here when it is radial component when it is radial component that means the component like this horizontal you have to take width as thickness again i am just repeating if the flux is axial the for axial component of flux axial means in y direction you have to take this thickness because this dimension is perpendicular to take here see this here this b is in vertical direction and then this is the thickness which is perpendicular to the direction of the flux is it not so for the axial or y y component you have to take here thickness square x component you have to take width square is it clear 
so at the end again again i'll repeat so having got this magnetostatic field plot using magnetostatic formulation the assumption here is the eddy currents do not affect the field right then we calculate bx and by at every conductor center and how do we find that we have seen that there uh, earlier any point how to locate in a in a element the actually those you know three elements you remember that how to locate a suppose this is a point then you actually have those three conduct three areas three triangles add them if that addition of three triangular areas is almost equal to this area then the point is within that triangle if it is outside of course then the the area of all those three triangles will be more than that is it not that that's how you can locate for every point in which that point lies okay so then we would have located for each of these points the corresponding finite element and then we already know bx and by for that and then we can actually calculate using this formula the ad loss due to axial field ad loss due to the radial field for each conductor and then we use this formula and then effectively we are integrating the ad loss for the whole winding okay so now this is the validation so ad current loss using uh, magnetostatic F fm simulation this is the you know and how do we verify this now what we will do will make the flux entirely axial right because the this formula this formula is applicable for when the field is entirely axial this formula is applicable when the field is entirely axial is it not here the flux is only in axial direction the classical eddy current theory the direction of flux is only in one in one direction is it not so here then what we will do we will make the flux entirely axial for validation purpose how do we do that the gap between the windings and the yoke will make it zero right see in earlier why there is a fringing because of end defects is it not because of this gap between the windings and the yoke top and bottom yoke there is a fringing of the flux the flux turns is it not like this in the center portion it is axial at the end it turns why it turns because of this gap and then it of course goes normal to the normal to the oh, that also theory we had seen because it is a high permeable core material is it not when you the when this material is having high permeability the flux will enter normally just refer to the boundary conditions lecture so now here if if we have to make this completely axial what we do we reduce this gap to almost zero if you make it almost zero there could be some problems in the code and all that so what we do is we keep this gap between windings and this core very very small maybe 1 mm so that the flux is entirely then it becomes axial as seen here so now this is the field plot obtained from the code with this gap between the windings and the yokes top and bottom yokes reduced to almost zero so flux is entirely axial now the loss that you calculate based on this should match with the classical eddy current formula which considers only the axial field because this this formula is for the entirely axial field mu zero ni by l is it not ni by l for even the solenoid ni by l is for the considering it is an axial field if you consider the fringing effect then then ni l by l is not valid is it not so since we are taking this b gap which is true only for the completely axial field and then the corresponding formula we uh, using using this formula we can calculate the ad loss due to the entirely axial field that we can actually match with this fm simulation with gaps reduced to zero and now you can see here analytical and fm for this case they are quite very close so that actually verifies that our code is right
is this point clear and here there is only one difference that uh, we are uh, considering this area of um, here S is the area of cross section of each conductor. So, we are taking S here it depends whether you take the number of turns or number of conductors. So, if you are taking each conductor if you are considering all conductors then it should be S. Okay, so, more about it actually uh, you, you could read uh, this book and uh, appendix A. So, you will understand the design more elaborately and then you can appreciate this procedure that we have seen. So, I think we will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture.